Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to go through the financial ratios that look at efficiency. This is focused on Year 12 Business Studies New South Wales HSC course, so it may not be exactly what you need, but I've got a link to the syllabus in the show notes, so you can double check that. Okay, so let's get started. I think it's very useful to start by talking about, well, what do we mean by efficient? And what we're saying is that if we talked about, say, a person was efficient, they do things by maximizing what they've got and they don't waste much. They are efficient with what they have. So that this is the same concept applied to a business. So the efficiency ratio looks at how well does a business use its resources to earn sales, reduce costs, boost profit. How much are they wasting in terms of the resources they have? So these ratios will help us to understand that. So in going into the ratios now, the first ratio we'll look at is the expense ratio. With the expense ratio, we are comparing total expenses with sales. So we're sort of saying, how well is the business using its costs, so its expenses, to increase sales? And that the idea that we want to push forward is that a business wants a lowest ratio as possible. So it wants to maximize the sales without having to increase the expenses enormously. So that the lower the ratio, the better it is for a business. So if we're looking at the ratio itself, the expense ratio, total expenses over sales. So let's think about an example here. So we might say that Let's say that the expense ratio has increased. Why could that occur? Well, maybe advertising costs go up, but sales don't increase. So let's think about that for a second. So let's say that the expense ratio rises. So what we're saying is that in this example, expenses rise, these increase from the advertising, but sales don't increase. They stay the same or they only increase by a small amount. So that the expense ratio then would become larger. And that's showing us that these new expenses, they're not really helping us increase sales. So that would result in that higher expense ratio. So if we think about it the other way around, if that the ratio falls, so let's have a look at that over here. So let's say we've got, so in this example, so we're saying the expense ratio would fall. So what we might say in that, oh, okay, so what's happening is that total expenses falls and stales, stales, sales either stay the same or rise. That will result in the expense ratio falling. So again, the lower the ratio, the better it is for a business. So let's have a bit of a look at a question here. So it says below is data for Stanley Street Cafe. Got 18, 19 and 20 total expenses and sales. I've got this additional information of the ratio. Calculate and describe the trend in the expense ratio. So for 2018, I'm going to have total expenses divided by sales. It's something I prepared a little bit earlier. That gives me 18.6%. Okay, if I look at 2019, again, that will be expenses divided by sales. That's 27%. Mm, it's getting worse. 2020 is 80 divided by 225. So that becomes 36%. So let's think about what we are seeing. So what I've got here is that we're seeing an increase in the expense ratio. And what this means is that, is that the business's expenses are rising faster than sales. So that what we are seeing is we are seeing rising inefficiency. Put an increasing inefficiency here. Because what is happening is that the company is spending more. But so that what is happening here is that the company is spending more. So maybe it's got an advertising campaign, maybe it's recruiting new people, but the sales are not rising by as much. So as a result, the expense ratio, this number here is becoming larger and larger, 
which is telling us that there's a lot of inefficiency happening because they're spending this money and it's not delivering a benefit. So they're spending this money, but it is not increasing sales. That is, or buy as much. So that is waste here. And that is what this situation shows us. Okay, so we're still looking at efficiency. And our last ratio here is the accounts receivable turnover ratio. So accounts receivable turnover ratio. So accounts receivable here for the business that we're really looking at what is owed to the business. And that those, and that that represents, and that represents funds or cash that could be used by the business. So the business is keen to have that money. So if it takes a long time to collect that money, if it takes ages to collect the accounts receivable, the business is being inefficient and it doesn't get paid so that it's not getting that money that it's owed. So if we think about what this ratio is, it equals sales divided by accounts receivable. So we're looking at in terms of what is owed to the business, how quickly is it getting that money that is owed? How quickly is it being able to chase up its debts? Okay, maybe a little bit tricky, but let's persist here. So if we're thinking about this, this doesn't really give us an amazing unit of measure. What is more useful for a business to know is to think about how many days does it take to chase up our accounts receivable? I just missed the table with my elbow. So what is the average length of time it takes to convert the money that is owed by suppliers into actual cash? The best way to do this is to apply this formula. So what we would do is in order to turn this into days is we would say, okay, so I wanna get this figure days, number of days for accounts receivable. So there's 365 days in a year. I put it over the accounts receivable turnover ratio. And then that will tell us roughly, roughly how many days it takes to collect those accounts receivable. So if we think about why, why does this work? So the numerator, the number on the top, that's the number of days of the year. The number on the bottom, the av uh, sorry, the accounts receivable turnover ratio, that tells us how often the accounts receivables are paid, how often they turn over, so that we're just putting that into 365 to turn it into a number of days. And the, the thing is, is you need to think about what matters for the business, right? If a business has got terms where it says everything has to be paid in 30 days, but accounts receivable is turning over every 60 days, that's a problem. They're not meeting their own targets. So let's have a look at a specific example of this. So we've got here a familiar example, perhaps, Young's Corner Store. So what we're looking at here is we've got revenue, gross profit, net profit, fine, fine, fine. Calculate the accounts receivable turnover ratio. So I think, okay, so accounts receivable turnover ratio. All right, so what that is going to require is sales over accounts receivable. And so in this case, that's going to be $100,000. So the sales part over the size of accounts receivable. So if we're thinking about this story here, we can look through the whole situation and say, oh, accounts receivable that is over here. So then I would say, so that will equal 100,000 divided by 10,000 and that equals 10. But 10 what, right? It's not a very helpful measure. So what would be helpful is that if I could turn that number here, if I could make that into days to see how many days is it taking? So what I would do is then I would say, okay, so for the days for accounts receivable, those are brackets, not Cs, then I would say, well, there's 365 days in a year. It's taking around 10 to turn over those accounts receivables. And then that would give me 36 and a half days so that it's taking around 36 and a half days to collect those accounts receivable. 
And then we would just compare that to what the measure is. Is this company trying to collect in 30 days? Does it have longer terms or shorter terms? Is this a problem? But either way, we have turned a number that isn't very useful into something we can work with. So this video looked at the ratios for efficiency. It's a bit more of a challenging concept maybe to kind of understand what it's doing and what it's showing. But essentially we're looking at how much is the business doing with its resources in terms of the expense ratio when it's spending money on resources? What's its return like? And then the other one, the accounts receivable turnover ratio, in terms of the money that is owed to it, how successful is it in terms of collecting that money? How efficient is it in chasing up those debts and using it time to collect the money that is owed to it? Okay, so there might be questions and that's not a problem. Just put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.